anti-Semitism has no place in the United States Congress. And Congressman Omar is terrible, what she said. And I think she should either resign from Congress or she should certainly resign from the House Foreign Affairs Committee. What she said is so deep-seated in her heart that her lame apology — and that's what it was, it was lame, and she didn't mean a word of it uh, — was just not appropriate. I think she should resign from Congress, frankly. But at a minimum, she shouldn't be on committees, or certainly that committee. The subject to change, huh? But so far, so good. And uh, we're hitting New South Korea. We defend them and lose a tremendous amount of money, billions of dollars a year defending them. Uh, they agreed at my request and working with Secretary Pompeo and John Bolton, uh, they agreed to pay yesterday $500 million more uh, toward their defense. $500 million with a couple of phone calls. I said, why didn't you do this before? They said, nobody asked. So it's got to go up. It's got to go up. You handled yourself incredibly last Friday. Uh, but on behalf of all of us, up, uh, right now it costs us $5 billion a year to defend. As an example, South Korea, we have a great relationship and with President Moon, and we're doing great things, and North Korea is coming along. South Korea is just an example. Uh, but South Korea is costing us $5 billion a year, and they pay — they were paying about $500 million for $5 billion worth of protection. Uh, and we have to do better than that. So uh, they've agreed to pay $500 million more, and uh, over the years, it'll start going up. It's heartfelt, too. Believe me. Okay. Thank you all very much. And a new trade deal with South Korea. And the same thing will go with Japan, and the same thing will go with Saudi Arabia and many others. I mean, we protect Saudi Arabia. They've got nothing but cash. Uh, and we protect them with great subsidy. We give Saudi Arabia subsidy. It should be the other way around, as far as I'm concerned, right? So uh, a lot of things are happening. And all of this inures to the strength of our country and to our economy. And a special thanks to Representative Omar of Minnesota. Oh. Oh. Oh, I forgot. She doesn't like Israel. I forgot. I'm so sorry. Oh. No, she doesn't like Israel, does she? Oh. Please, I apologize. If implemented, the Democrats' radical agenda would destroy our economy, cripple our country, and very well could leave Israel out there all by yourselves. Can't do that. Of job-killing regulations. Never before has a major political party been more outside the American mainstream than the Democrats of today. They have become the party of high taxes, open borders, late-term abortion, crime, witch hunts, and delusions. And now the Democrats have even allowed the terrible scourge of anti-Semitism to take root in their party and in their country. Republicans know that America is the greatest force for peace and justice in the history of our world. But these left-wing ideologues see our nation as a force of evil, the way they speak so badly of our country. They want to demolish our Constitution, weaken our military, eliminate the values that built this magnificent country. You have to look at some of their recent comments, which are never talked about. When you see the four Congresswomen, oh, isn't that lovely? I'll give you just a couple. I have pages and pages, but we don't want to bore you. We don't want to go too long. But we have to give a couple, because that's the great thing about live television. They can't cut it. Representative 
Ilhan Omar. Of a really great state, I almost won the first time in decades and decades, Minnesota. Great state. By the way, I keep hearing how much enthusiasm is in the radical left. I don't think they have enthusiasm. They're just fighting with each other. We have all of the enthusiasm. He goes home now to mommy, and he gets reprimanded, and that's the end. Sorry, mommy. Sorry, Mom. Didn't mean to embarrass you, Mom. But it's true. We have the enthusiasm, folks. Look at this. Look at this. And by the way, thousands and thousands of people outside and people that couldn't get in. Thousands. We've got all the enthusiasm. They're fighting each other. They've gone so far left, nobody wants to even think about it. So Representative Omar blamed the United States for the terrorist attacks on our country, saying that terrorism is a reaction to our involvement in other people's affairs. She smeared U.S. service members involved in Black Hawk Down. In other words, she slandered the brave Americans who were trying to keep peace in Somalia. Omar minimized the September 11th attacks on our homeland, saying, some people did something. I don't think so. Some people did something. Yeah, some people did something, all right. She pleaded for compassion for ISIS recruits attempting to join the terrorist organization. She was looking for compassion. Omar laughed that Americans speak of Al-Qaeda in a menacing tone and remarked that, you don't say America with this intensity. You say Al-Qaeda makes you proud. Al-Qaeda makes you proud. You don't speak that way about America. And at a press conference just this week, when asked whether she supported Al-Qaeda, that's our enemy. That's our enemy. They are a very serious problem that we take care of, but they always seem to come along somewhere. She refused to answer. She didn't want to give an answer to that question. Omar blamed the United States for the crisis in Venezuela. I mean, think of that one. And she looks down with contempt on the hardworking Americans, saying that ignorance is pervasive in many parts of this country. And obviously, and Importantly, Omar has a history of launching vicious anti-Semitic screeds. And she talked about the evil Israel, and it's all about the Benjamins. Not a good thing to say. So that's Omar.
I said that the United States should rethink its policy of aid toward Israel after she and Congresswoman Tlaib uh, were denied entry. Congresswoman Tlaib but was later allowed to come in, but she decided not to. Should there be any change in U.S. aid to Israel? No. And you should see the horrible things that Tlaib has said about Israel. And AOC plus three, that's what I call it. AOC, just take AOC plus three. And you should see the things that the four of them have said about Israel over the last couple of years. I mean, Omar is a disaster for Jewish people. I can't imagine if she has any Jewish people in her district that they could possibly vote for. But what Omar has said, what Talib has said, and then yesterday I noticed for the first time, Talib with the tears. All of a sudden, she starts with tears, tears. And I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a second, because I've seen her in a very vicious mood at campaign rallies, my campaign rallies, before she was a congresswoman. I said, who is that? And I saw a woman that was violent and vicious and out of control. And all of a sudden, I see this person who's crying because she can't see a grandmother. She could see a grandmother. They gave her permission to see a grandmother, but she grandstanded and she didn't want to do it. So that's a decision of Israel. That's not a, a lot of people are saying that was my decision. That's a decision of, of Israel. They can let them in if they want, but I don't think they want to. When you read the things that they've said about Israel, how bad, and if you look at their itinerary before they found out, you take a look at their itinerary, that was all going to be a propaganda tour against Israel. So I don't blame Israel for doing what they did. I have nothing to do with it, but I don't blame them for doing what they did. I think it would have been very bad to let them in, including the four. I'm talking about all four, but these two that wanted to get in, Omar and Tlaib. And I think it would be a very bad thing for Israel, but Israel has to do what they want to do. But I would not cut off aid to Israel. And I can't even believe that we're having this conversation. Five years ago, the concept of even talking about this, even three years ago, of cutting off aid to Israel because of two people that hate Israel and hate Jewish people. I can't believe we're even having this conversation. Where has the Democratic Party gone? Where have they gone where they're defending these two people over the state of Israel? And I think any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat, uh, I think it shows either a total lack of